Welcome back. Let's take a look at another piece of art. Uh, what do we have on the list for today? Uh, the birdie relief. Now nah, we have that on the list for, for next time. I'm going to do instead some art of Inanna. So Inanna is amazingly important in Mesopotamian mythology. And we have quite a number of images of her. And believe it or not, they're very consistent. So Inanna's images tend to have her with uh, weapons coming out of her back, usually wielding a weapon, and uh, often with lions. Let's take a look at a few of them. Start with what, in my opinion, is the best image to look at when looking at Anana's iconography. So here we have Anana with a pair of wings stretched outwards. Um, she is wearing the same reed clothing that we see elsewhere. She's got a horned helm. She has her distinctive weapons from her shoulder, and she has a weapon in her hand. In her other hand, she has uh, what looks like rope leading to the nose of a lion that she has her foot on. So this is from the seal of Inanna, and it is clearly meant to depict Anana. It's very consistent um, with other images that we can identify as Inanna. Um, so some things to point out. Uh, the rod in the ring imagery is not here. Additionally, we do not see the uh, ring post that we often associate with Anana. That's not to say that those images are not associated with Anana, just that they are not the key identifying symbols that we would use to identify any deity as Anana. What we do see are the weapons and the lion. Um, she has one foot on the lion, not two, but that doesn't matter because we've seen, we'll see elsewhere where the lion is being stood upon. The second image is line art from the palace at Mari. Now here we do see her holding the rod and the ring. Again, we see weapons coming out of her shoulder and she's got one foot on the lion and she's got a weapon in her hand. Um, you can kind of see on the damaged portion that she is wearing what is presumably a horned helm. Um, and her clothing style has changed. Now, the reason why the clothing style has changed is because hundreds of years separate those two images. So you can expect that a shift from, say, reed skirts to linen clothing might have occurred. Also, uh, the palace at Mari would have had uh, clothing styles and artistic styles influenced by the Amorites. In this third image, we see, again, one leg is up, but the other one is on the back of the lion. So she is fully standing on the lion, but she has, again, the weapon in one hand, and in the other hand, she also has a different weapon. Um, what's interesting here in this third image is this sun disk up in the corner. So if you'll remember back from the seal of Inanna, uh, there is also a sun disk off to one side. So 
it links Inanna and Utu. So uh, this could be described as Inanna with Utu in this image, rather than the sun disk being Inanna's symbol. Inanna's symbol is actually a uh, eight-pointed star, which is often used to replace her in some images where they don't want to depict the goddess herself. All right, so this next one is the Ishtar seal. And again, we see Inanna with one leg forward. Uh, she is again standing on a lion. Um, she has weapons coming from her back. And instead of having that, um, that mace or sickle sword, whatever that was, the weapon that we've seen in other images, in this one she is just holding the bow. Um, so different from the first image, and in line with other images we see, we don't see wings. The wings are something that we only see occasionally in deity images, and they are not consistent. Even when Inanna is seated, as we see here, she has the weapons coming out from her shoulders. She is wearing the horned helm, and you can see what might be a lion image or two lion images crossed um, below her seat. These are her key symbols. These identify exactly who she is. Um, interestingly, in this image, we see a libation being poured out before her. Um, at a guess, this would be a water offering rather than a offering of beer or wine, um, because when you see uh, beer, you will see individuals with straws coming out of a vase of beer. Uh, but that's a little bit of an aside. So the key images we've seen all throughout these are that she's always got weapons, she's always got the horned helm, she always has, or almost always has, a lion by her. Um, there always has been in each of the images I've shown. Um, and she will occasionally have the rod and the ring. She will occasionally have um, a specific weapon on her person, for example, the bow or the um, what might be the moon axe or a uh, kind of a curved sword looking object. Um, now, it's notable that she is always clothed in these images. And you would imagine that a goddess so closely associated with sexual activity like Inanna would appear unclothed, but we never see that in specifically images that can be identified as Inanna. There are a number of nude goddess images that we do have that cannot be specifically identified as Inanna, but in the ones that we can identify as Inanna, she is always clothed. All right, let's move on to an <clears throat> another image. In this one, again, we see that she is standing upon a lion. Um, she has what might be weapons coming out of her back. Um, she has the arm up pose in a sort of a greeting. Um, here is another one that is similar in style, but uh, or similar, similar in pose, but very different in style. Um, again, we see the lion. Again, we see uh, 
weapons from her back. Um, it's difficult to see what her arms are doing. Uh, you'll notice that you've got the eight-pointed star above her head. Now, just for fun, let's take a look at some fakes. Um, this one is a image where we see she's got a bow on in her hand and we see she's got um, a quiver of arrows behind her. Um, she's got clothing kind of drawn on, um, but what's telling is the fact that the edges of the art are very clean. Uh, this Im indicates that um, this is a modern creation. Um, we also see uh, two individuals in intercourse to the side. Uh, this is almost completely copied from another image that we have. And the image where, or the bow that she's got on here is very similar to one of the images we've seen earlier. But the style of the bow is very crisp. The outlines of the image are very distinct, showing no signs of age or weathering. Um, the line at the top is very, again, clean, showing that perhaps it was uh, created with a modern tool or a machine. And you'll see a similar style in another image that I like to call obvious fake. Um, again, we see that she doesn't have a uh, she doesn't have weapons coming from her back the lines are very clean uh, we see a World War II era bomb in the image uh, we see a mushroom cloud with what looks like uh, arrows coming out of it this is clearly, clearly a fake. And stylistically, it's only similar to the other fake that I showed you. But ignoring the fakes, these images are centuries apart from each other, and they have a very consistent iconography to them. So if you are expecting to see an Inanna image, you should look for the features of the images that are consistent across the centuries. Um, so we'll see lions, we'll see weaponry, we'll see um, a number of weapons coming out of the back. Um, we will often see things like the sun disk by her that indicates that she is connected to the god Utu. Uh, we will often see the uh, seven point or the eight pointed star that is uh, representative of the planet Venus. Um, occasionally, you will see wings. Occasionally, she'll have uh, either a bow or a uh, what might be a moon axe or a sickle sword of some sort. Um, one or the other is fine. Um, if you see an image with most of these icons but not all of them, it's probably still fine. Heck, even in that first fake image, I had to really look closely because You've got her holding the bow, the arm up in the greeting pose. Uh, 
that's consistent. The thing is, the the first of the fake images, her clothing is not very well done compared to ancient images, um, but yet the lines are very clean. Uh, so because of these, because we have images that we can use to identify proper iconography, we can use these to weed out the ones that might not be her. Now, I cannot stress this enough. It's, to me, very important to have Inanna's iconography be proper, not just for Inanna's sake, but for the sake of all of the other goddesses that we misidentify as Inanna. Because it's, if it's important enough to look at the male deities and to say, okay, this aspect identifies this male deity and this aspect identifies this male deity, what does it say when we don't care enough about even the most important goddess in Mesopotamia to differentiate all of these goddesses? Say, this feature identifies Inanna, and this feature identifies Gula, and this feature identifies Sherida. There are a ton of goddesses in Mesopotamia, and we tend to just lump any female image that we see, goddess or not, as Inanna. And I find that personally disrespectful to Inanna. But uh, that's my personal take, and your mileage may vary. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one. I put a lot of time into it, and it's very important to me to get the imagery right. So talk to you next time. Enjoy. Bye-bye.